My name is John Dawson and I'm going to do a video today on some studio tips. The first uh, concerns the use of paint thinner and how to get the most out of it. Uh, the second is an aid in mixing complicated uh, colors and oils. And the third is uh, how to fix uh, old um, paintbrushes that you may feel have been ruined. So uh, let's get started. Okay, uh, this is an exciting little studio tip about paint thinner. Um, if uh, you paint uh, every day as I do, uh, you go through quite a lot of paint thinner. And this is a little tip that I can show you. You have uh, the uh, can that you use to clean your brushes with the uh, uh, dirty paint thinner. And you just pour that into a jar or a container. I'm actually using this jar um, uh, just for demonstration purposes. We need actually something much bigger. But uh, you, you pour the, um, the, the dirty paint thinner into a container and then you uh, just let that sit overnight. Uh, sometimes it'll, it, a few hours will do it. And uh, all the sediment and paint particles will sink to the bottom. And then the next day, once the paint particles have all uh, settled to the bottom and it's nothing but sludge down at the bottom, you can uh, take the paint thinner and uh, pour it off into a clean container. Um, it's not perfectly clean, but it's clean enough to clean your brushes. Then eventually the container will fill up with this sludge and you just dis dispose of it in any way that's ecologically uh, correct in your area. So for the containers, I use uh, paint cans, old paint cans. Um, if um, you don't have uh, any old paint cans, you can uh, uh, buy uh, empty uh, paint cans at uh, Home Depot or most paint stores. I use uh, two paint cans. Uh, you can probably get away with just using one, but it's, uh, it's a little more awkward and difficult. So uh, what, uh, what happens is, is that um, uh, each day I would pour um, the dirty paint thinner into the um, first paint can. And then uh, a second paint can, which had already had a paint thinner in it that has settled, I pour the clean paint thinner off into a, uh, into a can or a jar or whatever I'm using to clean my brushes. Then the next day, you just reverse the process. It takes about a year, actually, to um, fill the two paint cans up uh, with uh, that sludge. And that's uh, probably as a res uh, painting every day. It would take about a year. If you paint less than that, take longer, of course. It's also uh, ecologically more uh, sound because um, instead of uh, pouring your dirty paint thinner out uh, somewhere down the drain or whatever every day, uh, you're uh, constantly using the same uh, paint thinner over and over. And then when the uh, can gets full of sludge, you just uh, dispose of it in any way that's uh, ecologically responsible in your area. Okay, this is a, uh, a little tip about mixing complicated colors. First, we'll mix uh, something that has quite a few different colors in it. We'll start with um, uh, some uh, violet, I think that's manganese violet, a little lizard crimson, and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow light. And mix that very quickly. This, I'm going to try to do this very fast. I'm going to take a little bit of um, sap green, a little cadmium red light, and uh, a little bit of uh, cadmium uh, yellow light. And I got too much green there. Now we're going to take a little bit of each of these colors. Mix those together. And we'll add some white. Now we have a, a pretty sophisticated color there that uh, combined about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different colors. 
Now suppose you were uh, using this color in a painting and you ran out of it and um, now you don't really remember how um, you mixed it. Or maybe um, a month later you'd like to mix the same color and um, you don't really remember exactly uh, how you got to it. So what I do is um, I take uh, some paper, a good quality paper, uh, Reeves BFK is a uh, a good one to use. Just get a, a white sheet of Reeves BFK or some other good quality paper and then um, just put a sample of it on there. There's two different things you can do here. You can just put the, a sample on there of the color you just mixed and then write all the colors down on, uh, on there that, that uh, went into this color. Or uh, a little better way, which is what I usually do, is I first put a little dab of the um, first color that I mixed, which was a combination of um, of uh, violet, cadm uh, manganese violet, uh, alizarin crimson, and cadmium yellow. Then I add uh, a little dab of the second color that I mixed. which was um, sap green, cadmium red light, and again, a little bit of cadmium yellow. Then um, I mixed, I put a dab of the, oops, put a dab of the final color on there, which included white, and a little bit more yellow and a little bit more orange. I think I added uh, cadmium orange to that. And then I write on the sides, uh, which you'll see, this little formula for each one of them. So, um, a month from now, if I want to uh, mix this color, I have all the things, the ingredients that went into the color and it's easy to store and uh, keep for the next time you want to mix the color. Or if you're in the middle of a painting and you run out of the color and you don't really remember exactly how you mixed it, especially with so many uh, different colors, uh, you have uh, something written down that'll tell you pretty close of uh, how you mix the color. The only thing is you have to get the proportions right, but that's just a matter of trial and error. As I said, I use uh, a good quality paper, but you can also just take a, um, a piece of canvas and cover it with some gesso and pretty much do the same thing. Put a little dab of it on there and then write it on there. Uh, years ago, I used to do this uh, and then I would hang the, the uh, piece of canvas on the studio wall and just keep adding to it. In fact, I think there's one back there still. Anyway, um, that's a little tip on how to keep track of, uh, of very sophisticated and complicated colors that you might mix. Okay, this is uh, another little action-packed studio tip about uh, fixing brushes that you may think that you had ruined. If uh, you'd accidentally left uh, your brush uh, overnight or a couple days and the uh, paint had dried in it like this one and or this one, there's a way to fix that. Okay, what you need to begin with is uh, an old metal can. Um, it has to be a metal can. Uh, you could possibly use a glass jar, but the one thing you don't want to use is anything that's plastic. And then this is um, paint and uh, epoxy remover. It's by Jasco, and uh, you can get it at uh, Home Depot or probably uh, most hardware stores, or maybe paint stores. Um, probably any any paint stripper would work, but this uh, this works very well. And um, theoretically, we should actually use. Uh, uh, some rubber gloves to do this. I don't usually do that. I'll put one on just for the heck of it. These are obviously very old rubber gloves <laughs> coming apart. So let's put the other one on. Ah, the heck with it. It's a good idea to wear rubber gloves. If you get it on your skin, it burns like the devil. So. You probably should use rubber gloves, but um, it's probably not real necessary. 
if you're actually going to use it to strip paint off of something, then you probably would definitely need the rubber gloves. So you pour some into um, a can. Just put the paintbrush in there. Um, you can either let it set for 20, 30 minutes, or uh, you can try and uh, loosen it up by just pushing it up and down. I'm going to try to accelerate this a little bit so it might not come out quite as perfect as it would if we let it set in there. And the um, paint remover is uh, getting most of the paint out of it. Now that's got quite a bit of the paint out of it. Then um, take a little paint thinner and pour it into a little uh, into a container and then you need some paper towels and then you wash it out in the paint thinner and kind of clean it off you get a lot of little uh, particles that will come off onto the paper towel. And as you can see, it's uh, almost uh, back to new. Now, at this point, if you're gonna to continue to use the brush right away, you don't have to do anything else. However, if uh, you uh, plan to um, uh, put the brush away and not use it right away, um, one of the things that you can do, or it's probably a good idea to do, is uh, put a little bit of soap on it and kind of push that in there a little bit. And this is water. Just clean it in um, just a little soap and water. And then um, I use a little bit of Vaseline. And you just put a little Vaseline on the brush and it helps keep uh, the brush the, uh, the brush's shape. And now you can uh, put that away and whatever a month from now if you need a brush um, it's ready to use and all you really have to do to use it is to go back and clean the, the Vaseline out with a little paint thinner. And the brush is um, almost like new. Not exactly like new, but pretty close and and brushes are pretty expensive so this is a good way to uh, to save them if you make the mistake of letting the paint dry in them. Well that about does it for this one. Uh, we'll follow this up with some examples of my own work and uh, the web address for my web page and Facebook page and if you're interested, you can subscribe to other instructional videos of mine on YouTube.